High speed chase topping 100 miles per hour came to an end after a trooper purposefully crashed the car. It led to an arrest some say went too far. Now during that arrest, you can see troopers on top of the driver hitting him. And there's that video. It happened after they did a what's called a pit maneuver to stop that vehicle. WREL investigates Cullen Browder joins us now live to let us see and hear what happened. Cullen. Deborah, we received an anonymous tip about how this chase ended, so we went to court to get the dash cam video. The video and the audio clearly show this was a very tense situation. The question, was the use of force justified? Get on the ground! This is how the October 4th State Highway Patrol chase ended at Highway 264 in Wake County. For perspective, let's start about 25 miles earlier on westbound 264 in Wilson County when Trooper Austin Batchelor hit the blue lights when he noticed this Honda sedan going 101 miles an hour. The driver takes off, at times reaching speeds of 120 miles an hour, weaving in and out of traffic. Other troopers join the chase. Raleigh, he's still all over the road. He's nearly sideswiping traffic left to center. Stop sticks cause the driver to spin out, but the driver then rams the trooper's car and takes off again. Raleigh, he's driving in reverse. He just did a J turn. After other failed attempts to stop the car, Trooper Bachelor uses a so-called pit maneuver to force the driver off the road and into the median safety cables. Show me your hands! Well, show me your hands! Stick your hands out the window! The trooper breaks out the back window for a better view inside the car. As the driver emerges with hands held up, he holds an object, which turns out to be a cell phone. Bachelor swings his flashlight, appearing to hit the driver's arm. Sorry, then wear, troopers sorry. pounce. Oh man, come on, man! I'm giving you that hands, man. Come on, bro. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. The hell's your problem? I'm sorry, man. You guys, how many people get killed right now? Yes, sir. You're an idiot. I'm sorry. Excessive use of force. We showed the video to Kerwin Pittman, who serves on the governor's task force for racial equity and criminal justice. It's just out of control and it's out of order. Uh, it, it's really somewhat uh, triggering to continuously watch videos like this, hoping that they would get it right. It looks rough to the general public that don't have to deal with controlling subjects. Wellington you know, Scott is a retired control. trooper who now trains law enforcement as chief operating officer of the National Command and Staff College. After viewing the video, he called the chase textbook. As for the arrest, he notes the driver was on his feet in less than a minute after takedown. Adrenaline in the, is flowing. Um, and now they've got to get this guy under control and they want to get him under control as quickly as possible. People are going to see punches. They're going to see some knees used there. Is that appropriate? I'm not saying, yeah, it's appropriate to smack the heck out of somebody, but that was all in an effort to get that person under control for that moment. Highway Patrol declined to be interviewed, but in a statement told us, quote, the driver was not immediately compliant and distraction strikes were utilized by members to affect the arrest. It's extremely egregious to see him continuously be hit. Um, now, distraction strikes, one may call it, I call it excessive force. Troopers walked the driver, now identified as 48-year-old Robert Etheridge, back to the patrol car. In-car video shows grass in his hair, but no visible bruising or blood. A paramedic checks him over. Sir, are you hurting anywhere? Yes, sir. Where at? They kicked me all in my face. And at his request, an ambulance takes Etheridge to the hospital, where he was cleared and sent to jail on multiple felony charges. The force used during the arrest remains a source of debate. It was rough, but it wasn't abusive. I understand emotions could be high, um, but you're trained to kind of suppress these emotions and make the best decisions uh, when, and when things like this are happening. And clearly the best decisions wasn't made. Etheridge faces a long list of charges ranging from driving while impaired to felony counts that include assaulting an officer. We texted, we called, we went to his home to get his side of the story. So far, we have not heard back. As for those troopers, the Highway Patrol is not commenting on whether they've been disciplined or retrained. Deborah. Cullen Browder live in Raleigh. Thank you, Cullen.